low monster energy, the refreshingly delicious drink with a kick. There's nothing quite like a quick jolt to the heart to get your day started off right. In 1935, nearly a century ago, a man and his three sons took a risk and began a company. The Hansen Naturals Company, and they began to sell Hansen's fruit and vegetable juices. Their first big break was in LA where they started the company and sold their very first products to their very first client, Hollywood Film Studios. Later renamed the Fresh Juice Company of California, their juices included oranges, carrots, apples, strawberries, and bananas, as well as blends. Everything went okay for a while, but in 1988, the company filed for bankruptcy. Unable to finance plant operations any longer, Hanson Natural began to lose hope, until 1990, when California Copackers Corporation acquired them. Sales soared and horizons looked full of opportunity, but despite their best efforts and increased sales, the company's debt was piled so high they could not dig their way out. But in 1992, a new CEO stepped in and saved the company yet again, Mr. Rodney Sachs, this time with a new strategy, capitalizing on the longevity of the company's family name. And for a while, it worked, sounding the alarm to other companies such as Coca-Cola and Pepsi that Hansen's products are a force to be reckoned with, and they weren't going anywhere. Even Snapple stepped up to the scene in 1992 and marketed the living heck out of their teas, raking in over $232 million in 1992 alone. Hansen Co. felt that things were looking bright, so they confidently expanded to the Midwest in 1993. They introduced a smoothie-type drink, consequently losing them nearly $3 million from 94 to 95. But the story doesn't end there. The drink made a comeback in 1996 and sold over $350,000 of that very same smoothie. And it went on to create a very new trend, the energy drink. You see, the smoothie was not made as thick as a traditional smoothie, but instead it was thinned using herbals and additives such as ginseng and taurine, which is a meat-derived amino already found in other Asian energy drinks. Not only that, Hansen's drinks were lightly carbonated, packing their punch into just an 8.2 ounce can, offering an immediate boost whenever you needed it the most. Marketing changed directions, and instead of selling the consumer a deliciously tasty product, the enhancement to your day living was now the primary focus, touting benefits such as antioxidants, stamina, and de-stressing capabilities. The FDA at this point was powerless because the smoothie was not marketed as a food or a drug, but this would eventually change. However, for now, this was a good thing for those smoothie slinging siblings. Hansen products continued to dominate well into the 1990s, and by 1999, revenue reached upwards of $64 million. Their products were quite literally flying off the shelves. Then, in 2002, something happened that would change the industry forever. The release of Monster Energy Drinks. And since 2010, the market cap has gone from $2.5 billion, skyrocketing this humble family company to a $50 billion industry. Quite literally everywhere drinks are sold, you can be sure a can of Monster will be spotted lurking around the shelves. But just because the company was so successful, does that mean that Monster Energy is healthy? or even safe for us? Have the healthy endeavors of the company's founding father and sons fallen to the depths? Or are there still some roots in existence from this well-intentioned family business? Let's just take a look at some of the ingredients, shall we? Monster has a multitude of different products, and for the purposes of this video, we will be looking at the original version of the Monster Energy Drink. In the original, first and foremost, we can attack the sugar content, which touts a whopping 54 grams of sugar. Let's not get into now how much sugar you actually don't need on the daily basis, and who it is that sets those limits. We'll save that for another time. But then of course, there's the carbonated water as the primary ingredient, which is water, with carbon, in case you didn't know. Also known as club soda and sparkling water, it's made by injecting carbon dioxide gas either by natural processes or injected while under pressure. It is an acidic beverage and can actually do damage to your teeth if you somehow manage to drink them every day for 100 years. And that is thanks to your saliva, which partly neutralizes some of that acidity, protecting those pearly whites. A recent study in 2012 researched the effects of carbonated beverages on your health 
and found a link between these famed beverages to chronic kidney disease. But the shocking finding was there was actually no link or risk associated with non-cola beverages. Yeah, so, does yeah. that mean there is nothing to worry about and we can drink monsters till our eyes turn green? We grow a nice fur coat and a set of snarling teeth? Unfortunately, the link identified by the study was found to be weakly supported. This is all due to the fact that citric acid is often used in these drinks to support their acidity. But in cola beverages, phosphorus is used instead. And it's believed to be responsible for those pesky kidney problems. But now for the vitamin content of these drinks. Specifically, vitamin B2, 3, 6, and 12, all including over 200% of the recommended daily value, and B12 having over twice that at 500%. But why? Can you even absorb the excess of the daily value in one single serving? Well, yes. And no, your body has an exquisitely efficient system to absorb, metabolize, store, and excrete vitamins. So your body takes what it needs and simply eliminates the rest. Vitamin B is water soluble, so any surplus of it is simply excreted in the urine. You might be wondering if B vitamins are really all that essential, and as it turns out, they are. Because there is such a wide array of vitamins and genetic compositions unique to each individual, there is just no simple answer as to the specific dose of B vitamins for any one person. But we can say for sure that, in general, B vitamins are healthy and truly do improve your bodily health and functioning. You see, B vitamins act as coenzymes in the vast majority of processes that underpin every aspect of cellular function. The active form of B vitamins bind with proteins. This action increases the end product's capability in terms of the diversity of reactions that it can catalyze. As an example of their omnipresence, your body converts niacin, or B3, into a coenzyme called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or simply NAD which is a necessary part of over 400 different reactions, the highest of all vitamin-derived coenzymes. An active form of vitamin B6 is essential to the function over 140 enzymes required for the synthesis, deconstruction, and interconversion of amino acids. If you're wondering what amino acids are, they're simply molecules that combine to form proteins. And when proteins are digested or broken down, amino acids are all that remain. The body uses them to make proteins, to help the body break down food, to grow, repair body tissue, and perform a variety of other functions. It is the never-ending cycle of catabolism and anabolism that fuels your body and keeps things running smoothly. Overall, the plethora of functions undertaken by B vitamins generally can be divided into their two roles, as I mentioned, the catabolic and anabolic metabolism. Catabolic is just a fancy word for saying the deconstruction of larger molecules, which provides energy and the means for anabolic, which is the construction of smaller molecules into the bigger one. As you can now understand, it's quite literally the never-ending cycle. But what does it all mean? It means that each B vitamin supports a cascade of effects in your body and ultimately, they are good for you. But you might be wondering, what about the B vitamin content in Monster Energy? Like I said, there are four B vitamins in the drink. First is riboflavin or B2, which supports healthy blood sugar, blood pressure management, and even cardiovascular health. It is essential for energy production, helping the body to break down fats, drugs, and steroid hormones, converting tryptophan into niacin or B3, and converting vitamin B6 into the active form that the body uses to reduce inflammation. Second, there is vitamin B3 or niacin, which plays a major part in energy production of cells by changing the energy in carbs, fats, and proteins to a form the body can actually use. It also stimulates the production of neurotransmitters such as L-DOPA, dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. It even helps with cellular communication and DNA expression. Evidence shows that doses up to 500 times the recommended daily allowance exert beneficial effects on blood sugar control, insulin sensitivity, and anti-inflammatory properties. But too much vitamin B3 can cause skin flushing, which isn't too bad, but long-term excessive use can cause liver damage, which is important to take note of.
Third, vitamin B6, or pyridoxine hydrochloride, as mentioned, it plays a role in over 100 enzyme reactions, and the body needs them for amino acid metabolism and protein and red blood cell metabolism. It helps to break down carbs and fats, specifically needed to convert tryptophan, another amino, into B3. It also supports brain development and immune function. However, too much B6 can lead to peripheral neuropathy, which is a loss of sensation in your arms and legs. But most important about B6 is that it has a hand in regulation of neurotransmitter production, and there's a positive correlation between increased levels of B6 to reduced inflammation. This role is particularly important because inflammation contributes to a vast amount of health problems, such as arthritis, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, inflammatory bowel diseases, Alzheimer's, dementia, and overall cognitive decline. Other transmitters B6 is responsible for producing are dopamine, serotonin, GABA, noradrenaline, and melatonin. Even a mild deficiency of any one of these would lead to poor focus, attention span, mood changes, behavior problems, reduced sleep and quality of, lower libido, as well as increased stress and inflammation. Last but not least important is vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin. It contains the cobalt mineral and helps maintain nerve function, create new blood cells, and helps in DNA production. Often it's an important part of prenatal vitamins and doctors believe it helps prevent birth defects like spina bifida. In general, evidence suggests that benefits of B vitamins extend well beyond the accepted biochemical cutoffs for deficiency and that consuming the recommended daily allowance for some B vitamins would still leave large proportions of populations at risk for insufficiency. There seems to be very little evidence for supplementing only the bare minimum requirement since the body will use what it needs and excrete the rest. To sum up B vitamins, are they safe for us? Yes, provided you don't consume over 500 times the recommended daily allowance on a regular basis, which in the long term can lead to liver problems. But before you drown your body with B vitamins, there's much more to this story than vitamins alone. We first need to understand if the additives are adverse or advantageous. First up is sucralose, an artificial sweetener also called Splenda. It's actually made from real sugar and has zero calories. It still stimulates responses in your body though, as if it were a real sugar, such as the release of insulin. Studies show a link between its use to obesity and weight gain, but it could be related to the types of foods consumed that actually contain the sweetener. Interestingly though, the body doesn't break down sucralose, but instead excretes it. Because it's not properly digested, it can give you an upset stomach and some unruly, uncomfortable bloating. Humans are notorious for loving their sugar, and so are bacteria. But apparently, bacteria don't much care for sucralose, as colonic cultures indicate an antimicrobial effect. This could be to blame for the bloating. Even though sucralose is considered safe, the long-term studies are mostly inconclusive. It's odd though that there's not more effort to get to the bottom of these widely utilized white powders. Next up, citric acid, which is generally considered harmless. It's an organic acid mostly found in citrus fruits and is actually known to reduce the formation of kidney stones by preventing the crystallization of calcium and oxalate, which are the two most common components of kidney stones. Next is sodium citrate, which is also considered harmless. It is the sodium of citric acid, and as far as food is concerned, it's a flavoring agent with a sour taste and is even used in healthcare to treat conditions such as metabolic acidosis, as an anticoagulant in stored blood, and even makes blood and urine more alkaline, or less acidic, in order to prevent certain types of kidney stones. Then there's taurine, which is also considered beneficial. Taurine alone could very well have its own dedicated video on its benefits. It's a natural beta amino acid with a propensity for cellular protective patterns, serving as an antioxidant with anti-inflammatory effects. For us mere humans, it is not essential, but for some species it is. 
but that doesn't stop it from being used in Japan for treating congestive heart failure and showing promise in treating a number of diseases. As a matter of fact, it may decrease instances of stroke, cognitive disease, diabetes, arthritis, cardiovascular disease, including high blood pressure and antiarrhythmic properties. Then there's Panax Ginseng Extract, which is also considered beneficial. It's also been called Asian or Korean ginseng and has been traditionally used in Korea and China to treat various diseases. It has a variety of therapeutic effects, including serving as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. It helps to vasorelax or control blood pressure and improve circulation. It serves as an anti-allergic, anti-diabetic, and an anti-cancer agent. Ginseng contains over 40 components known as ginsenicides, each with their own benefit and use. Then there's L-carnitine L-tartrate. This amino acid is made predominantly by the liver and kidneys and stimulates fat metabolism. It also improves recovery and fatigue by reducing muscle damage and soreness. Some people can have some GI upset from it, but in general it's considered safe. Then there's sorbic acid and benzoic acid, and they work together as preservatives. They're acids used most often in canned drinks to prevent the fermentation of types of bacteria and are generally considered harmless to humans, mostly. Benzoic acid is a natural component of fresh fruits like cranberries and strawberries, but it's also used as a preservative in many foods that you eat every day. So far, this is the first bad thing that I've seen in the ingredients, aside from the excess sugar content. When benzoic acid combines with vitamin C, it becomes benzene, which is known to be a carcinogen, a cancer-causing agent. US regulations mandate that there be no more than five parts per million present in any drinking water. Although it's regulated and naturally occurring, when we are adding such a risky component, personally, I'd rather not chance it. The next ingredient is D-glucuronolactone. Interestingly enough, this additive may favor the body's natural defense mechanisms for fighting off carcinogens. I wonder, does this have anything to do with benzoic acid being on the ingredient list? It's a naturally occurring substance produced in small amounts within the body, but just because it's made by the body doesn't mean it's safe as a supplement. Unfortunately, little research has been done and current knowledge on this substance is rather scant. Therefore, conclusions on whether or not this compound is safe or harmful cannot be made. Next, there's the ever-famous guarana extract, also known as guaranine, polinia cupana, and sapendaceae. Guarana is a rainforest vine that was domesticated in the Amazon for its caffeine-rich fruits and long since has been used by Amazonians to increase awareness and energy. Guarana seeds contain more caffeine than any other plant in the world. The amounts of guarana found in popular energy drinks are generally below the amounts expected to deliver therapeutic benefits or cause adverse events. However, some young adults have been admitted to emergency departments with caffeine overdoses after having overindulged in guarana-based energy drinks. Caffeine is known to be a diuretic which causes you to increase your urine production. Consequently, you have an increased risk of kidney stones if you don't keep yourself hydrated. Next is the salt content, and we all know what salt is. Your body eliminates salt by pushing calcium into the urine, thereby, yet again, increasing your risk of forming kidney stones. In controlled amounts, it's harmless and even necessary for multiple bodily functions, but too much salt in your diet can lead to high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, and even stroke. Second to last is maltodextrin a common additive that can be metabolized quickly for use as energy. It is a highly refined carbohydrate and often added to foods to improve the texture, shelf life, taste, and as a sugar replacement for energy. Its main drawback, aside from a high carb content, is that it has essentially no nutritional benefit. Too much puts you at risk for diabetes due to its high glycemic index, weight gain, and high cholesterol. It also impairs good bacteria in the gut, much like sucralose and the amino L-carnitine as we discussed earlier, causing gas, bloating, and overall GI upset. 
So then, is it really a surprise that many people can be found running to the John shortly after consuming a monster? The disadvantages of maltodextrin far outweigh the benefits, and experts agree that stevia, dates, honey, pectin, and guar gum are much healthier alternatives. But overall, experts consider maltodextrin a safe product for consumption. The final additive is inositol which is formerly vitamin B8 but was since declassified just like Pluto because our bodies make it naturally. It's part of cell membranes and contributes to the function of muscles and nerves. It plays a role in helping the liver process fat and if you recall, niacin or vitamin B3 actually helps the liver control its fat content as well. Curious, did they handpick each individual ingredient, full well knowing the risks and adverse effects, in an attempt to counteract them? I don't know if I should be pleased or petrified by this fact. The long-term effects of energy drinks are something of a mystery. Unfortunately, there's no long-term studies on the effects of all of these ingredients on the body. Energy drinks may magnify risks for heart disease because studies suggest these drinks serve as a gateway to other forms of drug dependence. Norway, Denmark, and France have actually banned the sale of Red Bull, mostly in response to a study on rats that were fed taurine, which exhibited bizarre behaviors including anxiety and self-mutilation. Whether caffeine can cause high blood pressure and coronary artery disease is still a controversy, but questions have been raised about its safety in patients with heart failure and arrhythmia. However, there's no clear association between coffee and the risk of high blood pressure, heart attack, and other cardiovascular disease. Aside from gastrointestinal issues and the added benefit of a free laxative effect, I think I will continue to take my chances and drink energy drinks. But for me personally, I will continue to look for those which don't have all the extra and unnecessary ingredients like maltodextrin, artificial sweeteners and preservatives, as well as many other questionable substances. What about you? Do you think that these energy drinks are the harmless, power-packed supplement that the big enterprises would have us believe, or perhaps there's a bit more going on that meets the eye? Thanks for watching.